Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day and turning this day into an absolutely brilliant and magnificent one. I trust you. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can recover a JPEG image that is plagued with artifacts in Photoshop 2022. With the recent updates with AI filters, this has become easier than ever. However, there might be some situations where you might have to make some manual adjustments. In this video, we have three examples from three different walks of digital life that will pretty much cover most of the situations that you might come across. It's always better to be prepared than sorry. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we get started, I do not want you to miss out on an extraordinary event that is happening tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. And I'm excited to be one of the speakers there. If you're a photographer, graphic designer, social media content creator, or video editor, or a visual artist of any kind, the Visual Storytelling Conference is for you, where you're going to learn not only the creative side, but the business side of the game. With creative sessions on Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere Pro, Final Cut, among many, many more, you also have sessions on things like NFTs, learning how to grow your Instagram. Instagram, how to get started with TikTok, filmmaking, and the list is just endless. Did I already tell you that you can attend all of this absolutely for free? The pandemic has definitely changed the way things happen, but it doesn't have to stop you from connecting with people. This conference also has virtual trade shows along with networking opportunities where you can connect with creatives like you from all around the globe. Isn't that fantastic? As I told you already, it is absolutely free to attend and watch the sessions and you can sign up at pix.live slash VSC. Now keep in mind, it's going to start tomorrow and it's going to be four days full of fun and amazing sessions with 50 plus internationally incredible speakers. Backed by the big guys like Nvidia, Dell, Intel, sponsored by Fujifilm, this is going to be huge and I think you should definitely register. And if you choose to get a VIP pass that has its own exclusive benefits like $1,600 worth of software, you can stream whenever you want and so many other perks which you can check in their website. You can use the code UNMESH20 to get a 20% discount and more details about the discount are in the description if you're interested. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download any of the photos to follow along, check the links in the description. Let's get started with a very simple example with very less artifacts. Let's zoom in, but it still has a lot of them. Let's zoom in, have a look at the skin. There are so many blocks and chips right here and keep in mind, these are not pixels. Pixels are smaller. Have a look, it's completely destroying the hair and if you look in the sky, you can see it here as well. So how do we get rid of that? With the background layer selected, all you need to do in the later versions of Photoshop is go to Filter, Neural Filters. Once you're in, zoom in to see what's happening as you apply these filters. Now let's turn on JPEG Artifacts. If you cannot see it, let me expand it right here so that I can see everything properly. This is JPEG Artifacts Removal. If you have very less artifacts that you can barely see, you can choose Low. For Medium, choose Medium. High kind of works in this case because the artifacts were completely destroying her hair as well. If you zoom in, have a look at what a wonderful job it has done. So here's the before. Look at that. Look at how it's destroying the hair and have a look. Here is the after. It fixes it all up. Now you can output this as a smart filter if you want. You can output this as a new layer or you can apply it to the current layer which I do not recommend. I want you to have the flexibility of applying this filter where it is necessary. So let's go ahead and choose simply new layer. You can also choose smart filter if you wish to. If you did choose smart filter, it would give you the option to go back and change it from high to medium or low if you wish. But in this case, I feel it's not needed because there isn't a slider for minute adjustment. So I think high will be enough and I don't want to change it. Now it does perfectly remove the artifacts from most of the areas and you can stop right here. But if you look at this area, it just makes it very, very soft. So here's the original. There are some details, but also there's a lot of artifacts. So you can just turn this on and you can simply click on the mask button, take the brush, black as the foreground color, decrease the flow to about 10% and just paint on the areas gradually where you want some details back. A little bit of artifacts is okay. We don't want this to be completely blurred. So that way you can get some details back. But have a look, the artifacts are gone. Here's the before, you could see these. Here's the after, completely gone. Similarly, right here as well, here is the before. You could see these artifacts, have a look. Here's the after, completely gone. And notice how it also adds texture to compensate for it. So here's the before, here's the after. It could have completely blurred it, but it adds this texture. 
which is pretty cool. Moving on to the second example. And with this example, we will learn what to do in flat graphic scenarios. Some of you might say Umesh is doing cheap marketing, but actually this is how I got the idea for this. So I was sharing this post and sharing about the conference. And when I posted it on Facebook and downloaded it from Facebook, for some reason, you know, Facebook does a pretty harsh compression. And when I looked at it, I said, oh my gosh, this is really, really sad. How about I make a video on how to fix this? So that's how I got it. That's why this example is here. Anyway, this is going to be a little different in the later steps. But for the first steps, same as before, we will go to filter, neural filters. I think that's a lot of artifacts. So let's turn it on and leave it at high. Now it sure does a fantastic job, but it also changes the color a little bit. Hit OK. Have a look. Here's the before. Here's the after. Now it's good for most scenarios, but take a look it changed the color a bit. So how do we fix all this? Now keep in mind, this is flat. So why don't we select that area and simply fill it? Wouldn't that be more convenient? So there are lots of ways of selecting this. You can use select color range, you can use channels. So in this case, we're just gonna use channels. And by the way, if you're interested in color range, you can watch this video. Select the channel where there is the highest contrast between this area and the background. So here you have the red channel, green channel, and the blue channel. I think with the red channel, it completely stands out. So hold the controller command, click on the thumbnail of the red channel. Keep in mind, it only selects the bright areas, not the black areas. So we need to invert the selection, press control shift I, command shift I to invert the selection so that these areas are selected. Now you can go ahead and create a brand new layer. And with this selection active, you can take the brush and you can sample the original color. First of all, let's turn this one off and sample this color or the color that you want and simply turn this back on and start painting to fix it. Make sure the flow is back at 100%. There you go. As simple as that. Press Ctrl or Command D once done and have a look at this. So here's the before, here's the after. If you think we went in too much, this is what we could have done. Let's go back. Now this is before painting. You can also go to select, modify, and then contract the selection a bit. This will make the selection go a little inside. So let's go to contract. One pixel is fine, hit okay. And now let's fill it. By the way, if you want to hide the marching ants as you're painting, you can always press Ctrl or Command H and then continue painting. The marching ants are still there, but it's just hidden. See, it's doing a much better job. Now you might say, what about the white areas in the background? Those are weirdly colored as well. Well, you can first press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Keep in mind the selection is still there. Ctrl or Command H to unhide it. Ctrl or Command D. Now to select the white areas, we're gonna go to channels again. You can also use color range if you wish to. Let's go to channels, hold the Ctrl or Command, click on the thumbnail of the red channel. Now this selects the white areas. Now you can create a brand new layer if you wish to for more flexibility. White as the foreground color and you can start painting but it can go a little too much inside. To see that, first of all, press Ctrl or Command H to hide the marching ants. Then as you paint, have a look, it's getting too much inside. So why don't we contract this one as well? Let's go to select, modify, and then contract. One pixel is fine. And you can press Ctrl or Command H to hide it and then just paint. See, <laughs> it fixes that as well. Super cool, isn't it? Let's take a look at the before and after. So here is the before, and here is the after. Such massive of a difference. Now keep in mind, this was just a simple text. I know some of you in the comments are going, Unmesh, we can just simply rewrite this stuff. Well, what if it was a logo and you wanted to preserve the original design right there? What if it was a font that you could not find and you had to use that font that was already there? Or what if that's a custom font? So just for preserving purposes, this is important. Now let's come to the third and the extreme example. There's a Ton of banding. Let's say this was one of your images and you lost your original one and you had to download it from Facebook or some other place and it has completely given up. Look at it. There's just so much banding. So much so that even the filter won't be enough. The first pass would definitely be applying that filter again. So let's go to filter, neural filters. Of course, we're going to set it to high. Let's turn on JPEG artifacts high. Let's wait for it. Now, one of the uh, latest additions on Photoshop that I actually really appreciated about Adobe was that they added processing on device and not on cloud. Thank you, Adobe. Now, granted, this doesn't run like Flash, but at least it works offline. We can output this as a new layer. Take a look. A lot of it is gone. So if we zoom in, here is the before. 
here is the after. But if we zoom out, we can see that there's artifacts still there. So how do we get rid of all of it? Now, before we get into the next steps, let's turn this off and on to see what other changes it has done. Because sometimes artifacts removal sometimes might also take away certain details, which we didn't want to take away. So if you look at the rocks, here's the before, here's the after. I think it's a desirable change. If it weren't a desirable change, we would mask that out. So here's the before. You can see a lot of artifacts right there as well. If you turn that on, it takes away most of that and it's working like magic. Have a look. Here's the before. No details in there. Here's the after. This is just out of this world amazing. For simplicity, let's name this layer artifact removal. Now we need to do some additional removal. For that, let's make a copy of this layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And now we're going to take the help of blurring here and not some regular blur. This is going to be surface blur. Now here I recommend that you convert this layer into a smart object because surface blur is a very customizable filter and there's a lot of minute adjusting. So let's go to filter, blur and then surface blur. Now first of all right here, increase the threshold all the way to the right hand side. Zoom in so much so that you can see the entire sky. If you zoom in too much, it might not help you. So let's keep it this much. I think this much is fine. And now let's slowly and gradually increase the radius from the left. Right here you can see all the banding. Let's increase the radius. It's going away, but it's still there. So you have to find that sweet spot. Now let's zoom out and see. You can still see some banding right here, so we might have to go a little further. Now to see these changes, make sure preview is turned on. I think 42 works brilliantly. Now we need to get the edges back. So let's decrease the threshold. And you need to stop just at the point where the artifacts start coming back. Keep that in mind. So slowly and gradually, we're going to decrease the threshold. If we decrease it too much, you will see the artifacts. See the artifacts are coming back. So. I think 28 is a great sweet spot. Hit OK. Oh my gosh, I absolutely forgot to convert it into a smart object. No problem. Let's press Ctrl or Command Z or Z. Let's go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Hit OK and reapply by going to Filter, Surface Blur and it will load up with the last settings we applied it with, hit OK. That's all. Now since Smart Filters already come with a mask, why not use it? So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush, white as the foreground color, make sure opacity and flow at 100% with a soft round brush, only paint on the areas where you want to remove the additional artifacts. We already took it away from the detailed rock areas using that filter, so we don't need to apply it again there because if we do, it's gonna take away all the details even more. We don't want that. This was only just for the skies and the reflection of the sky, of course. Be careful around the edges. If you paint a little extra, that's okay. This was surface blur. It maintains the edges. There you go, my friend. Want to have a look at the before and after? So here is the before. Take a look. And here is the after. Such a massive difference. So that's how to recover JPEG images and remove artifacts in Photoshop. It's pretty simple. First of all, just simply apply the artifact removal neural filter. And if it does not help, then only move on to the next step. If it's a flat graphic, you can consider recreating that area or repainting that area. If it's a landscape and there's a lot of artifacts still left out in the sky and the gradient areas, you can just blur those areas. And if the artifact removal filter is removing additional details that you didn't want it to remove, you can always mask it out as we did with the first example. I hope this video helped you. By the way, do not forget to sign up for the visual storytelling conference at pix.live slash VSC. I have a session on Photoshop compositing where I will teach you what makes composites look fake and how to fix it with Photoshop. It's going to be an interesting class. So do join me for it. I'm looking forward to connect with you. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if this video helped, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you for your time. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.